Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Craft Conversations. And today I'm here with Kira Kensala. Uh, Kira, I think you will do a better job introducing yourself than anything that I have to say. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bruno. Hi, I'm Kara Kansla. I'm 48 years old. I just turned 48, which is kind of shocking. You don't have birthday. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. <laughs> um, I live with my wife and two lovely stepchildren here in St. John's, right downtown. We have a ridiculous dog named Beatrice, and she's actually named after my grandmother. And Beatrice... Ha well, Beatrice, the grandmother, had a lovely husband named Ben, and B, the dog, has a stuffed animal named Ben. So it's all very strange. Okay. <laughs> and we also have a minnow. Just one. Okay. And uh, y yes. No, Hello? go ahead. Keep oh, talking. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'll just talk about myself forever. <laughs> <laughs> we also, um, we have a little house out around the bay in Upper Island Cove, and we spend a lot of time there. Um, I have a small studio there and a little store that's open sometimes, and uh, it's really beautiful, and we just love to go out there. So, yeah, that, that's where I work. I work in both places, um, and I also write and illustrate children's books besides being a full-time artist, so that's a little bit about who I am. Oh, that, that's uh, that's quite a lot, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> uh, so Kira has like this beautiful mind. Your creations are like fantastic. Recently, we, we put together a show in the Craft Council Gallery called Queer as Folk Art. And I'm very curious to know where did the idea of this show came from? Well, I have always loved folk art um, ever since I was little. My mumu, my Finnish grandmother, was a folk artist. Um, she didn't have any idea she was an artist of any kind. She made brooms, all different kinds of brooms, birch brooms, um, little fireplace brooms, big ones. She painted everything. She painted the rocks in her garden. And she, she just, she had very, very little, but what she had, she tried to make colorful and beautiful. And I always loved that. And then at home, we had folk art all around the house. And I've always loved it. And I now, as an older person, I collected and I have myself become a mixed media folk artist. I just love it's like thoughtful simplicity and where it comes from the maker has so much to do with the piece usually but with folk art generally it it focuses on themes like family and work and faith very rarely if ever as well especially growing up did i ever see a piece of work that showed anything queer or gay or lesbian or anything like that it was a, always husband and wife mother and father traditional family so because i'm a folk artist and i love it i wanted to do a show that had traditional folk art work in it but with queer themes so that's how i tried to bring those two things together that's very interesting like there was something that you say that that catch my attention like you became a mixed media artist and throughout the show every single piece has like different elements that you incorporate to them how do you go about choosing the medium for each piece? It's such a variety that you have in there. Mm, there, there is a variety. Um, that's an interesting question. Sometimes it's sort of obvious to me what things are going to be like with the peeps in the neighborhood. I wanted those all to be portraits. So it made sense to do them on canvas and use uh, mixed media to embellish them and decorate them. So that was obvious. But then when I was doing research on different things within the lesbian community, historically, I found the story about violets and how women in the 1800s would give each other little tiny bouquets of violets to show that they liked another woman and it was kind of a secret. I wanted to do a piece with violets, the piece a whole field of violets could never be enough. I knew I wanted it to be a really kind of soft and sentimental piece so I thought about painting it and I thought about and then I was going to rug hook it and I thought no that's just it's not soft enough. 
So I thought, no, that one has to be needle felted because it will look how I want it to feel. Does that make sense? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, I think that like every artist, they have like their go-to primary medium that they're like, I know how to work on that. I'm going to make the piece with that medium. And then like halfway through, you realize that you need something else and then you, you try to to evolve that piece in a different thing. And I think that's the same thing that you said about like, oh, I was going to do rug hooking, but then it wasn't soft enough. And then you move into the needle felting. Yeah, it just depends. Just I try to think about more so how I want things to feel when someone looks at it, like not to touch, but how I want it to feel emotionally than what it looks like. But both things are true. <laughs> for sure so hearing you talking about the idea of the show and, and like how you construct your pieces was there a major shift between your original idea for what the show would look like to what actually we had installed I think yes there was <laughs> um, and I went back and forth so many times um, with different ideas and and my practice evolves and it changes constantly. So sticking to a plan can sometimes be a challenge for me. Um, I guess, unless I'm doing a commission piece and then it's set in stone. So there were lots of things I hummed and hawed about. And one of the things I wasn't planning on doing was the peeps in the neighborhood and that whole entire community of queer characters. Um, but when I started them, I just loved them so much. And they reminded me of people that I know. And they were just like, just normal everyday people, which is what all of us queer folks are. And I just wanted to, ended up wanting to make this great big huge community of all of these different characters that we see every day out in the world. Except these ones are ostriches and <laughs> donkeys and cats and dogs. You uh, know what I mean. <laughs> uh, one thing that I always wanted to ask you, and it's something that Every time that we talk, and like in corridors and, and everywhere, it's we have this amazing queer identity and like we, we believe in it and we use our art to express that. And that's something that has grown in, in the last few years. Like especially mm -hmm. last year, there were so many shows yes. around queer themes. Do you think that the world changed enough that we as queer artists have that ability to portray ourselves and and not be criticized for that anymore i think it it is changing and it's just in the past few years that i've seen the change i would never have done this show 10 years ago it just it, and like 15 years ago it wouldn't have felt safe to do it i remember the first piece of queer folk art there were three pieces actually i did with my former partner and they were in the members exhibit i don't know maybe eight years seven years ago and I think perhaps they were the first queer folk art pieces or queer art pieces that had been in the craft gallery. I'm not sure. I think so. But I had probably 20 or 30 emails from young queer craftspeople thanking me for doing that and for showing showing the pieces and being brave. And you wouldn't think that someone was being brave by making a piece of queer folk art, but I guess it was. And I guess it is. And I guess we're still putting ourselves out there and things are changing slowly, but it is a little bit scary. And uh, also, I don't, Newfoundland is maybe a little bit behind Ontario and mm -hmm. places like that but it certainly has been accepted and I've been accepted and my online it is accepted and my lovely people who follow along my Facebook page I haven't ever had a bad remark or a bad comment so that is truly lovely and encouraging uh yeah I I think that's fantastic like I think that for so many years art was used as a form of expression for all the other communities and the queer community was always like as you said like with that fear of putting themselves out there and now that we actually have this space to do that uh mm -hmm. we need to use it and and like you're doing a fantastic job using it 
Yeah. Like your your work, it's natural, it's fun, it's vibrating, and it's as queer as it can be. Oh, thank you. Uh, and and it is a joy to see. Like I, I'm actually, as queer as I can be. Actually, that's one of the things that I miss the most. Like all, all this time, like locked in in the house and like without going to the actual gallery. Like sometimes yeah. I get myself just opening the website and going through your pieces just to to see them. I was like, okay, I'm happy again. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, miss them because they were all, everything in the show is hanging in the living room, in the dining room. So when it all, for like months. So when it all left, <laughs> I miss all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they become your friends, right? They do become yeah. your friends. Like all those faces looking at you every day. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so another thing that you said that is very interesting, you said that you you write stories besides being a full-time artist. Um, mm -hmm. How did you find yourself becoming like a full-time artist and, and developing that critical art practice? I wanted to be an artist and I wanted to write children's books from when I was little, little. It's all I ever, ever wanted to do. So I have had many, many different wild and crazy part-time jobs. I've taught English in Europe. I've traveled all over the place. Um, but I have managed to become, yay, a full-time artist for the past about 18 years. It is an awful lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication and it is really, really hard and very difficult to make a living full time as an artist. But because it's it was it's so a part of me and what I've just who I am that I sort of had to make my life work around my job and create a life that my job would fit into mm -hmm. so I could do it because I have to do it. It's just, I just love painting. I love making things and writing stories. And I just can't imagine not being able to do that. The fact that I've managed to do it full time. I mean, some people say, oh, you're really lucky. And I am lucky, but also it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> there is like a lot more behind the scenes than, than we see on the art. <laughs> yes. The uh, if people want you to check your website to see your pieces and your work, uh, how do they find you on the internet? On um, on the Facebook, I am it's Kara Cancela Artist, and I have a website caracancela dot com. Okay, fantastic. So everyone, get in those pages now and see what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Kara. It was lovely talking to you as always and anytime that you want to have a conversation feel free to call me okay thank you very much bruno